to, to be internal to this is to be very captive, you know, because the right decisions are never made. And, and, and people know this, and so they have to create compensations, routines, you know, cognitive dissonance routines for someone to blame. So whilst, whilst America has been squarely focused on the plight of the black community, yesterday the 2020 Vaccine Summit happened. Now, I don't know if you do know this. I mean, I, I haven't actually got a figure put on it yet. What, what I do know is that Boris Johnson has handed over $8.8 .8 billion, which is, what, seven-point-something billion pounds sterling, to Bill Gates. And Garvey. Um, and then a picture of everybody who is a donor came up, and details of thank you very much, yada yada yada, were associated with this, with this congratulatory backslapping that was going on in summary of the conference. Now I didn't see Trump's little addition to these snippets. I mean, every world leader that's involved in this summit. Um, you know, especially Bojo, who had a large wedge of cash to hand over to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But Trump was definitely one of them. Um, so all his rhetoric surrounding the WHO and the CDC of late, which is giving him ever so much brownie points and, and leverage and momentum going into, I, I believe there's an election happening this year in the States, is there not? Um, you know, and QAnon and how Trump is our hero and how he's looking after us and how he's secretly draining the swamp. I mean, all Trump's done is reallocate the funds from the WHO and the CDC to Garvey. It's as simple as that. Yeah, uh, and even my mum, my 74-year-old 70, mother, um, as, as a result of, you know, announcing that systemic frog is an actual thing now and seeing my activity on Facebook, which she's got right into during the, the lockdown, I mean, she can, she can Skype and everything. Now, I bought her a tablet. You know, I, I get a, I get a conversation with the top of her head once a day. <laughs> yeah, you know, but she's getting right into Facebook. She watches YouTube now. Um, she started wondering why things were disappearing off YouTube, questioning it. She, she's she's definitely the archetypal Welsh matriarch. Yeah, I mean, she's now asking proactively asking me about um, what Matt Hancock is saying in his daily briefings. He, he's our health minister. Okay. You know, every every time he you know because I. What, what she's doing now is, as a result of her own YouTubing and Facebooking and Googling, um, which, she, which she hasn't done in six months prior, and now, now she's accessing herself relevant information that I've been going on about. And lo and behold, you know, two months, three months later, is turning up on a parliamentary briefing on the news at six. You know, and as that started happening, she's turned around and said, you know that thing you were on about three months ago that I thought you were absolutely crazy and told you to go and get a proper job over? Yeah. Well, and, you know, we're having that conversation now. Yeah, you know, so I'm, I'm lucky. I'm really lucky in that respect. But, yeah, the, you know, the inquisitive nature of, of the whole side of my family has been completely brought out. And um, I, think, I think that's bled through to a lot of people. Estate agents, for example, um, have been restricted by the Welsh government in a way that they haven't been in England. You know, the principalities and the nations of the UK are all coming out of lockdown at different times in different ways. It's a mess. It really is. Demonstrably, they don't know what they're doing. Um, and uh, Mark Drakeford, who's our first minister in the Welsh Assembly government, um, is basically scared that he's mismanaged the NHS for the last 20 years. They've got no money, got no resources, and if Cody does break out again, they won't be able to handle it. So Wales is coming out of it behind everybody else. And one of the aspects of that is estate agents. And, you know, I'm active in the property market, so I talk to these guys. Uh, whereas in, in, the, in England now, the property market is full on, you know, and going, and people are selling their houses and buying houses, and, you know, in Wales, they're not allowed to. I mean, for another three weeks, so all the estate agents in Cardiff are actually banded together and they're all going around people who know they know to, to film in front of their properties to say, 
when regulations are lifted and they've all got processes down there and they're all unifying, trying to leverage and put pressure on Mark Drakeford to lift the restrictions. Because, and I've, this is first-hand knowledge, that they're, they're getting phone calls from prospective buyers, prospective sellers, saying, look, tell Mark Drakeford to get his head out of his own ass, lift the restrictions so we can sell the house, or we need to move. What's going on? And and this 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 mentality that I know I'm lucky to have in one side of my family seems to be a growing consensus, a growing movement within the Welsh communities, you know, on a wider scale. And I feel Britain in general, you know, based on how many people turned up for the marches in London and Manchester and things like that. Social distancing is now being viewed on as something that is all about control. I mean, I think the mask issue has been obfuscated, but, you know, good, don't go good for you guys, man. Well, That's yeah, awesome. and I, I, I think I think if well, I would hope that you know if we do get a second wave, there are going to be a lot of people actively looking for information to inform themselves. Okay, Matt. Listening to right. Matt talk. Right, right. Good. On I the, think the circumstances around why we're having a second wave of a disease that's obviously been mutating to be less less contagious and less active and less fatal over the last six months and has basically brought the country to a stop. So, you know, I mean, and we, we've talked about the, the the second outbreak theory a number of times over the last month. This afternoon, in fact, Nicola Sturgeon, yeah, she actually said today that because of um, people ignoring social distancing measures in Scotland, it is looking likely that a second outbreak has already happened. The, the reports of new cases are on the increase. And, you know, we're, we're now having that rhetoric from our national leaders. So whether Mark Drakeford actually does um, release restrictions in Wales and allows us to catch up with the rest of the country in, in light of other, other parts of the country saying this stuff now in three weeks, I think it's going to piss a lot of Welsh people off. It really is. Okay. And whether he is out actively and outwardly ignored or not remains to be seen. People are sick and tired of the lockdown. All of a sudden, we've got the riots, the race riots. Oh, yeah. That's a big distraction, but it's also another, it's, it serves the narrative of a, of a upsurge in cases because all the people on the streets, oh, they're making people sick. So there's that and the police state prerogatives which will are now the news is beginning to blame on Trump. So th this is this is classic CIA shit, where they they direct the blame for what they want to happen as far away from them as they can. Yeah. And they do want to police state, and they do the plan to disarm America has been going on for a long time. And I used to think this is right wing hysteria. It's totally true. And when I hear you say that the only the best thing the, the what Americans have ca going for them against the vaccination regime is their arm to the teeth, well, well, and, and that's and it, I mean, you, the U.S. was the only country in the world in March where ammunition outsold toilet roll. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know you just gotta love that. My I contractor mean, for my garden project, <laughs> a friend of his came to him, hey, man, I, I, I'll swap you 40s for a toilet paper, 40, 40 caliber bullets, cartridges. Love I it. got 40s. I'll swap you for toilet paper. I laughed out loud. <laughs> and that's exactly what your point. People are buying. They realize they bought up more ammo while everyone else is buying toilet paper. And like, what can I trade for toilet paper? Uh, and that—that's the part I love about the U.S. I mean, you know, it doesn't—it doesn't require a difference in politics to understand the greater good over there. When when it hits the wall, I, I like to think that you can never underestimate the power of um, the capacity of people. And and I think I think that's what we're getting to right now. You know, people. Okay, people say, so that's your optimism about the everyman woman. That's I, I, I do. I, I remain optimistic because, I mean, there's there's so many things in play and so many people that would love for me to give up on that notion, and I think too many people are giving up on that notion. I, I think it's it's an ideal that unites people. Whether it's the CIA trick of blaming Trump, 
know, Trump calling out the race card, getting everybody outside. So, you know, COVID can be reported, the, the narrative can be supported. I mean, one, one guy in group said, um, I, I can't believe it's racism season. I still have my COVID decorations up. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that's... That was that sums up the irony of the situation perfectly because, you know, it's the same game. It's the same game by the same people over different issues. And, I, I, you know, I, I think it gets to the point where too many people understand that. 